we saw a lot of different user experiences, but everything is um, uh, built the same way on the same three kit. Uh, so none of our customers have anything uh, uh, extra. There's nothing uh, available to three kit that our customers also don't have access to. Uh, so let's actually walk through that here. And, and that's precisely what we're looking at is uh, again, the three kit platform. I've got a, a, a demo environment here with some demo products uh, that will that will walk through and kind of recap what we were looking at on the previous slides. So first things first, uh, I've got my entire uh, uh, asset um, asset library here. I've got a few different products, very simple again, demo org here. I've only got a few products, uh, but we'll maybe stick to my um, uh, my folder here with uh, just some some products for for my media cabinet. I'm not going to actually create an asset, but I'm just going to click on this button here so we can see the different types of um, uh, assets that we're that we're working with. Uh, of course, folders for organization purposes, but scenes, right? This is where I'm going to set up my camera angles. We saw the different cameras kind of moving around with uh, the tailor-made configurator, but also my lighting elements. Is it indoor? Is it outdoor? Do I have leather furniture versus um, uh, uh, maybe something metallic? So do I want to uh, decrease or increase the intensity of my light so that it's not too reflective? Uh, then, of course, all of the models. Uh, the models are going to be determined by, again, what the actual physical products we're selling are. And we'll take a look at some uh, decomposed models. All right, it's going to be the actual sellable product, but then also the individual parts and components that go into it. And then, of course, right, what are all the materials, the things to actually bring it to life? Uh, so I've got my materials and canvas is what we're calling uh, textures. So right, all of my different uh, image swatches that, again, again, actually bring to life those products. So giving it then those tactile elements, the look and feel different textures, different reflections, different colors, different designs. Uh, we're handling all of that with, um, with digital materials. Uh, so let's, uh, let's, let's actually walk through and take a look at what I mean by all of that. Here you can see uh, these are my individual, uh, my individual parts that go into the cabinet. We'll take a look at the, the end result here in a second. So we're kind of building our way up to it. Uh, but again, here I've got uh, just a few different uh, storage options with um, a two drawer, three drawer option, a couple of door options. And then you'll notice uh, the handles and the knobs are, are not connected to it, of course, because we want to, again, be able to configure down even to that um, to that level. Um, corresponding to my individual components and parts are going to be my materials. And so in this case, I've got just these four simple wood finishes. Uh, so again, the idea is I want to reduce everything down to again just the lowest common denominator of to what extent is your product sellable that's the extent to which we want to again kind of decompose everything uh, but we want to of course build everything back up and so how do we do that we've been talking a lot about attributes we've been talking a lot about configuration so three kit we of course we want to uh, create all of those inputs right these are the actual buttons that users ultimately are going to be clicking uh, but those buttons of course need to have a corresponding visual change so what do we mean by that uh, we've been, again, we've got our standard uh, input types that uh, you're normally going to interact with on any kind of configuration form online. Uh, but we also have something unique that we're calling an asset reference. And so what that means is, as we were just looking on the previous tabs, I have a library of those individual parts. Here, for example, I've got handle style. Let's try storage style. Uh, again, I had a library of those individual two drawer, three drawer, and the standalone doors. But I want to actually have a system of attributes that references all of those parts dynamically, and then correspondingly, uh, the attributes to reference all the materials as well. So how do we actually, what does that look like when we bring everything together? Here's a little preview. So here again is the cabinet. We saw that previously on one of the, um, one of the slides. We had that GIF. But here again, uh, we see the full finished product. So here again are those attributes that we were just looking at on the previous tab. But inside of my attributes, right, we're actually populating that with uh, those options, those standalone components. Um, and we've got, again, the three drawer option. Let's uh, go through, cycle through a couple more options here. Two drawer, three drawer, a couple door options. Again, we've got a few different um, handle options with um, the different pulls, the different knobs. Uh, then, of course, all of my different finishes as well. So what does that look like from an actual end result? Well, again, we take all of those inputs, we take all of the options, we take all of the attributes that I'm configuring in 3Kit. And then we actually want to expose that full configuration experience uh, uh, representing all of the different options, but again, with more of a branded look and feel that we actually want to put on a website, uh, but also still maintaining all of the rules and logic that we've configured. So any dependencies in that configuration and any of the rules that we've configured uh, that govern how a user can and cannot configure your products. We, of course, want all that to persist through to an actual e-commerce store. And so here again, as I work my way through, uh, we, of course, see the changes to material. 
Uh, we, we've got even granularly down, I can configure just the, the metal or the finish of the knob there. We'll zoom in a little so you can see it a little more closely. And then of course, again, right, actually swapping out for those individual components and ultimately the door, or I should say storage style as well. Uh, you'll notice a couple of things going on. So from a three kit standpoint, Ash had mentioned this earlier, uh, we do have those three experiences. Right? So another reason uh, to show this one is we've got all three on the same page where I've got my embedded 3D. Uh, I've got um, uh, the, the photorealistic 2D renders as well, what we call virtual photographer. So again, I've got close-ups, different angles. I've even got some lifestyle images here. And of course, as I make changes, right, we want to see that change reflect in the images themselves as well. So again, from a configuration standpoint, we're no longer limited to, again, just a few uh, a few options. We're no longer limited to having to pre-create all of those SKUs. Uh, again, what 3Kit wants to do is capture all of the configuration details. And from this, we know exactly what options the user has created. So I can do a number of things. I can dynamically create my SKU as I go through a configuration experience or I can potentially create multiple line items for building out an entire bill of materials. If I have, for example, different, um, uh, different line items for the classic pool versus the individual little knob there. Um, if I wanted to, again, turn this into multiple line items or a custom SKU, the key is 3Kit is capturing all the configuration detail so we know precisely what the user has configured. 